Hi there. Um, yeah, it's um, snowed quite heavily recently, and here we are. Winter wonderland. Got about oh, 10 inches in some places in the city, and here probably close to eight. Dump down, Monday, hardcore snow day. But it's beautiful, and the novelty hasn't worn on off yet, so um, quite liking it as long as you can stay warm. Thankfully, I have lots of woolly layers. Um, I've received a bunch of questions, or not a, oh, enough, enough questions to put a little video together answering them. Just um, give me some background and some facts about the old, uh, the old project. Just gonna go inside and back upstairs. And see, it's all nice and clear of rubbish. The building inspector from B-Seed, which is the uh, building safety and engineering division um, here in Detroit. It's just left, lovely fella called Joe. He's very friendly and we had some good chats about the place. He thinks it's a good house. So let's uh, start at the start. How I found this place. I got, I got to Detroit about three months ago and uh, the girl that I was staying with, now my girlfriend, Alex, she has been doing up a big old house for the last several years, three years, and so do a lot, so have a lot of people that she knows and just around town, like you can just buy abandoned houses for peanuts and a lot of people are doing that and doing them up. So I thought, well, Detroit's pretty cool. And I can imagine myself sticking around for a little while and also seems to be on the move. So let's have a little look and see what's for sale, shall we? So there's several ways you can buy these houses. One of which is through the Detroit Land Bank, which is um, basically a Detroit government initiative they take people's houses off them if they can't pay delinquent property taxes. Um, also a variety of other reasons. Some people just abandon, just leave their houses. They can't be bothered anymore with them. Um, so they, a lot of them fall into the possession of the Detroit Land Bank. And the Detroit Land Bank then kind of decides whether they're worth selling or if they're going to um, demolish them and then sell the empty lots, which there are just a lot of. Uh, for example, out the window here, there's two empty lots there next to me on this side. And then on the other side, go and have a look. Uh, yeah, there's another two on this side too. I've put plastic sheeting, that's what I'm doing at the moment, it's just put, finishing putting plastic sheeting up to stop snow and rain blowing in. So yeah, Land Bank um, sells houses or demolishes them. This place I found after, I don't know, I was looking for about two, two or three weeks on their website. And I eventually realized that what I wanted was a two family house, as close to the city as I could find. Ideally with a roof that didn't leak, with empty lots next to it for sale. And I'll get onto those. Um, and with a fairly dry basement. A lot of the time, lot, most of these places, the roofs are shot, they're full of water damage, and also the basements leak and they just fill up with water and they're disgusting. The two problems kind of go hand in hand. When your roof is shot and the gutters have come off, instead of the water being directed and dealt with properly, it just falls down the side and the, water, the ground around the basement um, foundations just ends up sodden and so you just end up the building just ends up sitting in like a kind of pool of water of its own making instead of directing that roof water away and keeping the ground around the building relatively dry so uh, after some oh, I was just I was obsessed I was obsessed with looking on the land bank site and every day there's new listings so I was just tracking I had a little, like a list of favorites that I was looking at that was probably like, I don't know, 25, 30 houses long. 
And then this place came up and I didn't really pay much attention to it. I thought it looks like a total garbage house. Um, in the pictures on the land bank site, it was just completely overgrown. The house itself was just full of rubbish. It looked like it had been squatted in for like 50 years. And it, I just expected there to be like dead bodies and shit inside. Like it did not look good. Um, overgrown outside, really rough. And I just paid it no mind. And then I kind of came back to it and I thought, oh, let's have a little look. It's in a great spot. Like there were two pockets in the city that I really decided were pretty good. Grand Boulevard, anywhere near Grand Boulevard on this side of, I can't remember what freeway it is, but there's like a major freeway just in that direction. Um, anywhere on the city side of the freeway off Grand Boulevard, I thought would be pretty hot because Grand Boulevard is undergoing major redevelopment at the moment. The redevelopment hasn't hit this area yet, but it's only a mile away. And there's, the city's moving so fast, it's really picking up, picking up pace, the development here. So I thought, you know, if I could get somewhere in this little area, um, it could be decent in a couple of years, and we'll see. Stay tuned. But anyway, found this place, thought I'd have another look, paid it a bit more attention, and decided to come and check it out. So I came and checked it out, and the boarding in the, on the front door was um, had been kicked in. It was previously secured, but it was no longer secure. So I kind of snuck in, had a little look, and I was really pleasantly surprised. The floors were in really good shape. The roof has no leaks that I can see. There's certainly no problems up there, nothing major. There's no water damage inside the house, apart from where windows are missing and water has kind of sat on the floor. You can kind of tell, but those patches of floor can be replaced or they might even be salvageable, like sanding them back. I'm not sure. The rest of the floor is beautiful. Like, um, I don't know, it looks, it looks super shitty. And I guess it kind of is like, it's an abandoned house. What do you expect? But the floors are gonna sand, I think they're gonna sand and finish up pretty nicely. Especially here in the kitchen, where they've just been covered with layer upon layer of um, this peel and stick vinyl, these peel and stick vinyl tiles that are just the cheapest thing you can ever put on a floor and so that's what people do because nobody's got much money and they want their place to be nice. Um, but they just don't last and they just turn to shit and it's awful so, but they also protect the floors underneath. I haven't actually got to the timber floors underneath here yet but I expect them to be pretty good. Oh, here we go. People partied in this house a fair bit. Found some pretty dodgy stuff. Old condoms and empty baggies and I don't know. Uh, party on, I guess. Um, but yeah, so back to my story. Origin, origin story. That's what we'll call this one. Um, I kind of decided maybe this house is for me. I Another criteria that I wanted, so the criteria that I wanted, one of several pockets of the city that I determined, Northwest Goldberg being one of them, which is where this place is. Um, another criteria was two family. I really wanted to love the idea of a duplex. Um, they're just a lovely building typology. I love the scale of them. They're big, but you don't have all of that house to deal with on your own. You can like rent out the bottom and it could be a, like a small income earner. And if you get the, if you get nice trustworthy people in there, then basically the building just look pays for itself over time and their rent pays for the property taxes and the upkeep and everything. And you're just sitting pretty. You can be, I don't know, go traveling and not worry about the place getting broken into because there's always going to be someone there. Just great. So two family area that I identified. Another thing was I really, because these houses take up most of the lot, like the lot sizes are really small, but because there's so many abandoned houses and they get like uh, demolished all the time, there's empty lots everywhere. So I decided I wanted a two family with at least one empty lot next to it that I could buy. 
Now the empty lots, if you um, own the property next to them, you can apply to buy it through the land bank again and all you have to pay is $100 and you get the empty lot next door. So I found this place and it has two empty lots. It's got one on each side, both for sale. And so I just thought, giddy up, like this is, this is too good to be true. So on the day of the sale, it's like an online auction thing. There's two buying formats. There's, um, there's an auction, which is standard, and that's where you can see what people's bids are and it gets bid up. And then um, each bid extends the bidding time by five minutes. So until people have given up and there's a clear highest bidder, they just keep going. I've seen them go for like hours and hours, get, getting bid up to like 24, 30,000 easily for like nice houses and nice areas. Um, in those cases, they're not far off being able to move into, like they're pretty nice. Um, some of them even more like higher, higher figures um, for the big two families that are in good shape. This one was an Own It Now. So Own It Now is a different format. Again, it is uh, basically a blind auction. You submit your bid and then you just wait and you don't see what, how many other bidders there are. Oh, that's, that's not true. You see how many other bidders there are, but you don't see what their bids are. So I was watching, it was a couple of hours till the close and it doesn't get extended for any reason. So I was waiting about two hours before the close, a bid went in. I was just like, oh, someone's, someone's keen. And then about an hour later, there was another bid went in. And I kind of thought, Ooh, okay. The first one was definitely just a thousand bucks. The minimum bid is a thousand dollars. So you, yeah, so they actually make some money off it. I guess that pays for the time they've put into like securing and you know clearing overgrowth and stuff which is what they do um, second bid went in and I was like okay I had to kind of decide what my bid would be so I kind of game theory thought about it and I was like well the first bid will be a thousand the second bids probably maybe 1100 they don't want to pay more than they possibly have to then a third bid went in and I was like hmm okay I don't know how much that one is. It could be 1500, it could be two grand. I'm not sure. Also, another thing is that when, once someone submitted a bid, they can revise their bid. And I don't think it shows up as another bid if they do that. I'm not sure, I could be wrong. So anyway, I was, at, at this point, I was just like beside myself with anxiety and excitement. And I decided to punt in a bid of 2800, which, for a couple of reasons. I I sold a camera before I got to Detroit. I went on a little trip to New York and while I was there I had sold one of my cameras and I sold it for $2,800. So I thought well that'd be pretty funny if I like essentially trade a camera for a house. So that's what I've done essentially. So I put in the bid of $2,800 and I was the highest bidder and I won the house. So I bought this house in Detroit for $2,800 and now I've got, uh, they say six to nine months to make it, to get it compliant. Now compliance is one working kitchen, one working bathroom, lived in, so all services connected, heat, hot water, uh, all that stuff. and. I have to get it compliant before I can buy the empty lots. And one of the major reasons that I got this place was for the empty lots. So the race is really on to get this place compliant and get my like get my butt living in here so that I can snap up those empty lots and start like building my kingdom in the um, in the wild inner city suburbs of Detroit. Not that wild. But it's going to be pretty cool. With the empty lots, my plans are sort of loose. On one of them, I want to put a hoop house, so like a big greenhouse building. Um, in that, I want to just like grow a bunch of lovely vegetables and fruit and even flowers and herbs and have just a lovely kind of community garden vibe going on. On the lot on the other side, I want to build a structure um, to park three or four cars. Um, undercover parking, especially during winter, is just 
worth its weight in gold. So I'll probably put a parking structure out near the street and then in the back of that lot um, have more gardens and who knows, maybe even build some more structures, maybe develop it, build a house um, that I can then rent out or who knows, like the possibilities are numerous. So that's about it for questions that I've received. We're in Detroit. I bought the house for $2,800. Um, I'm going to move in in springtime. That's my goal. Hopefully nobody else buys the empty lots before then. I'm sort of first... I get first dibs on them because I'm the only neighbour to these empty lots. There's just a um, house on the other side. The other one is unoccupied. It is... I think it's due for demolition maybe sometime soon. And... Yeah, you can... Let's have a look at it. There you go. Here's the house next door. Yeah, it's pretty rough. It's probably going to get demolished. I don't know if anyone owns it. They're certainly not looking after it, but it's not in terrible shape. I mean, you know, who knows? Um, but there's two empty lots here, so I could end up I could end up getting more than two if, if things go well. And if this area ends up taking off, and I've got and I have that much land, I could like flip some of it, make a tiny amount of money. Who knows? Could also end up like just freaking underwater completely. But oh, it's cold, it's so cold. All right, I can't feel my fingers anymore, and I need to sheet up these windows. So thanks for thanks for listening. Um, I appreciate you, and I'll do I'll keep you updated. I'm going to sheet up these windows, and I'll talk to you later. Stay warm out there. Bye.